Yeah, welcome back. It's still the run-up, and we did tell you that uh, we're going to be discussing something about the APCPDP uh, fisticuffs, or more or less, because it's like they are, <laughs> you know, they are fighting. Everybody's blaming the other person for whatever is happening in the country. The APC is saying. PDP is responsible for whatever is happening in Nigeria now. And PDP is saying, we've left the scene for seven years. You are responsible. And we're getting tired of all this. Well, we still have Olubenga, uh, George, standing by to discuss this with us. Uh, Olubenga, has this, this war has been on for a long time. Shouldn't it stop already? Well, um, thank you again. Uh, it's not something that we would expect to end anytime soon. I think uh, um, 2023 elections is one of the most interesting elections in Nigeria's history. And um, I'm not expecting that after March, when the governorship elections end, that uh, um, everybody will just go home to rest. There is going to be a lot of issues, there's going to be a lot of litigations, especially after um, the candidate emerges uh, as president in February. And this is because of the uh, uh, many outstanding issues uh, that is around the most popular candidate at the moment. Uh, when eventually one of them um, wins and becomes a president, the others have you know, a body of um, issues or evidence or, or litigations you know, to pull up against each other. So I'm sure they are just trying to tread carefully right now because uh, if I bring out my card and you bring out yours, I mean, the whole thing is going to be a mess. But uh, uh, I don't see, you know, all of the brouhaha coming to an end anytime soon. But uh, is it not beclouding? Is it not um, uh, putting a, a veil over what the serious issues should be? Because instead of using this time to tell us about what should be done and what will be done and what can be done, uh, the major parties... The major opposition party and the ruling party are just throwing mud at each other. So is it not soiling the electoral process to leading to 2023? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it is not really soiling the electoral process. You know, um, it, it, it is expected, you know, in the competition. Um, we've seen vociferous opposition from time past, you know, I think it's even a bit fair now because you go back to 2015, 2014, 20, going to 2015, I'm sure you know what was the various opposition was like then. We know what it was like. Um, right now, I think to, to a large extent, they're still fighting fair, at least they're fighting themselves. But you know, uh, one of the things that I think is uh, very instructive for the Nigerian people who are the voters is that. Uh, uh, all of the mudslinging going on is an opportunity for Nigerians to make the right choice. You know, I keep saying that uh, we have um, 16 presidential candidates in this election, and uh, who knows, maybe um, the popular candidates, uh, they are sending a, this very strong message already to the Nigerian people, and um, it is the onus is on them now to make a determination and a decision to say, okay, uh, because of what we have, what we have seen so far in this process, uh, we, we will make decision in this line or to support this person or to support that person. We we can almost tell, you know, that it is not really about the Nigerian people. You know, all of the fight. It is about taking power, and that is a strong message to the Nigerian voters, to the all 95 million plus Nigerians who will be voting in the elections in February and, and March. Um, we've seen enough, we've heard enough, we've seen the, the signs. In fact, I want to say that if after this election, uh, we still make the wrong choice, trust me, we will have ourselves to blame because we saw the signs clearly enough. We know, uh, we have followed the campaigns, we know the people that are saying things, we know uh, the people that have genuine intention. If you have no intention, I mean, you wouldn't be bothered sometime, or if your hands are so clean, uh, you wouldn't be bothered about what other people are saying or doing against you. You would focus on your promise to the people. You would focus on your message to the people. But when somebody says this and all you go do is um, try to tackle it and try to, you know, diffuse uh, the tension or diffuse the the bad message and the bad press that's going out there, it, prob it probably might mean that maybe you have a lot of cockroach in your pocket that you do not want to expose and you find your opponent doing that. Well, if you are sure, 
you are confident that despite all that they are doing, uh, you don't have a problem. I mean, the facts are there. All you need to keep doing, you know, is to keep pushing your good image out there to the public, is to keep pushing your message, and you leave the people to now go and find out, uh, to make their own research and make a decision. So for me, it, it's, it's very, it makes it even easier for the Nigerian people to make a positive decision that will give Nigeria the kind of leader that it needs or that it deserves. Uh, let's not forget that statement that um, the people get the kind of leader they deserve. So we will determine by ourselves the kind of leader that we deserve in 2023 uh, having studied, having had the opportunity to look at the banterings between um, the major players in this. Hmm. I, th I think the internet wouldn't let us continue. Uh, okay. The audio is really down. We're hoping that um, Oluwenga will join us later. But I was going to ask him a question, you know, uh, off of what the last po the last points that he just made, how that the whole banter and back and forth makes it easier for Nigerians to, to make, make their decision yeah. and make a choice. Does it really make it easier? Because these are, these are they are not new. All this blame game, it's mm. not new. Same thing happened in 2015 when power was moving from Good Luck Jonathan to um, Buhari. Um, Buhari. There was a lot of blame game after it took him months to pick out his cabinet. And it was because these people did this, so we have taken our time to do this. The blames continued, and it kept going on and on. And then you always have political parties bashing at each other. It is still the same thing. When you look at all the manifestos that have come out, Beautiful they all writer. contain Beautiful the writer. same news that we've heard before. So how does it make it easier for Nigerians to make a choice? Now, that is actually a question I would have wanted him to ask. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if he has come back. Benga, are you still there now? Can you hear I us? Can hear you. Yeah, okay. Yes. So I'm, just I'm go ahead. Go, go yeah, ahead quickly and just, just answer that, please. All right. How does it all make right. it so, Yes. So um, back to just raised, but... The truth of the matter is, if um, the people are not supposed to be confused, we already know that this is, uh, we are not new in this game. We have seen um, six elections in this country. This is the seventh one in this fourth republic, all right? Mm -hmm. So we have seen uh, the, the theatrics. We have seen, you know, the trend. We know how they do it. So that's why I said it's, it's easy. It should be easier, you know, for the voters to say, look, we know all the gibberish. Can we take documents and these manifestos? Can we look at how practical, how realistic it is, and not just the juicy words that politicians are saying out there, not just the juicy promises that they are reeling out to the people? It's easy, trust me, in my own view. That's one. On the other hand, I also think it's an opportunity for them to look at uh, at uh, uh, people who are not so popular. I don't know why we keep saying uh, uh, that uh, the most popular candidates. Most the popular candidates always win. How about checking the profiles, the manifestos, and the programs of the other candidates who perhaps are not as popular but have good intentions for the country? Mm. Can, we, can we use them? Mm. Can, can we begin to talk to them already about that? You know, this are, that, that's what I think we should do. I mean, it, it, it becomes easier for the night. Trust me, whatever the result of the election spells by March and February, it is totally dependent on the people because we had the opportunity to make our choices, even from the banterings and the allegations that are being ruled out there. I believe there are methods, there are means to check out if these are facts. I mean, talking about the people now, the internet is open. I mean, everything is quite open out there. There have been several reports, you know, against some uh, of the candidates and all that. So we can look at this and compare our books, compare our facts, and then reach a conclusive end that would be for the benefit of Nigeria and Nigerians. We know where the shoe pinches. We are the Nigerian people. We know uh, we, we know what where it affects us the most. and. I want to believe that at this point, we must have gotten to a point where we can say, yes, we know what we want. And if we do not know and we make the wrong choice, the onus is on us, and I'm sure we'll have ourselves to blame at the end of the day. Okay, just a quick one in the matter of seconds, if you may. Uh, if you had the opportunity to 
talk sense, <laughs> <laughs> forgive the word, talk sense into the people who are campaigning now to stop mudslinging and talk about the issues. What issues would you have them talk about? Very quickly now, Benga, are you still there? Okay, maybe... Um, connection has been disrupted. Maybe disrupted connection, again. maybe it's a divine intervention, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's anything. But, well, at this point, we need to really wrap up this. Okay, well... Okay, very, very quickly now. Um, I very think the... Okay, Benga, we'll just say thank you to you for coming on the program. Uh, that was uh, Lubenga George, a journalist and political analyst, uh, X-raying uh, what is happening now between the APC and the PDP and all the mudslinging, the fighting that has been going on. Well, he said it's expected, but he hopes that we will take the opportunity to make informed choices so that tomorrow we won't have to blame somebody else for the wrong voting that we did, the wrong choice <laughs> that we did. Today, the mm -hmm. parties are blaming themselves, but lot, let's not enter the blame game and start blaming another person. Let's do the right thing now. And that's how I would say my bye-bye. Stay patriotic. <laughs> know that it is just um, uh, about uh, uh, 68 days to the election and six days to Christmas. Christmas. So... <laughs> Happy Christmas in advance. I'll be saying this until Friday. So, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. And my name is Uche Chuku Onadu. Stay watching Plus TV.